Hey, good evening, guys. Whew, uh, kind of a rough day, down a little bit, but that's all right. What matters is, is we got some good news today. Um, apparently, the FBI <laughs> has come knocking on the broker firm, um, I'm sorry, broker and firm Westpac, and guess what? They are through, uh, who allowed the short sellers to knock us down from that 298 point a couple weeks ago. So remember when uh, it was kind of going around that that was just people selling off? No, we we actually know now that that was definitely shorts attacking us, which we all kind of, you know, guess. But now we have more accurate proof coming through because it was that attack that was reported that spurred the FBI to look into this. And now I've heard this from four different places, okay? So uh, this is this is pretty big news. Uh, really exciting stuff for GTII because they're they're coming in. Now, I have other updates tonight I'm going to talk about with <clears throat> MMTLP, CRTD as well. But um, I, I just want to start with GTII because I know that's why most of you are here. But um, guys, we're on track. Things are happening. Um, getting a lot of talk today about um, uh, what's going on with the audit. And just want to say that um, I'm hearing that it's actually the third party. It's not GTII that's holding it up. And so um, would I like more information, more more PR? Absolutely, I would. GTI is a small company, so um, I do feel like they already give us a lot for that, the size of that company. But I would like more just like you guys would. It'd be nice to have a statement that says, hey, this is where we're at. But we don't have that right now. All we have is the fact that um, they are moving on it. And as far as we know, everything's going smoothly. It's just taking time. These things take time. They have three books to go through which is um, multiple books for 1-800 Law Firm as well as GTII. So that's the third party holding it up. So uh, not GTII, not the 1-800 Law Firm. On the other side, Frommer, <clears throat> Jeremy Frommer on CRTD, really pushing things forward, did an amazing space call today. Highly recommend you guys track that down on Twitter. Listen to it. He answers a lot of questions uh, about where they're at and what their plans are coming forward. But also, uh, let's just talk about Upstream for a minute. I know probably a lot of people disappointed that it didn't get a bounce. But uh, just, just wanted to remind you guys, I tried to warn you, it wasn't going to bounce because of the listing. It's going to bounce when the dividend starts coming out. Upstream is not what triggers a squeeze. It's it's a tool that will allow them to put major pressure on on the shorts okay so the dividends that can be released on there that what could, is what could trigger it so frommer has all kinds of plans for crtd what they're doing with upstream so really exciting stuff now i also want to talk about the fact that <clears throat> yesterday lou put out a video saying like how he's looking down on upstream and and how like it, he doesn't see how it can help or anything and um you know that uh, that's pretty lame because truth is is um, I remember him way back a uh, year plus ago talking about how blockchain will solve everything AMC could do it tomorrow cause a squeeze and now we're upstream blockchain and um, I just I, I I just don't get it so if you guys have um, uh, if you guys saw that video and it discouraged you, if you're still watching Lou, I would just want to tell you that um, I 100% disagree with him here. I don't think that's an issue at all. Upstream is going to offer up amazing capabilities and everything that's going to happen still has to happen. So a lot of people are thinking, and this is what's said in his video, that uh, now the shorts could just go to Upstream and buy shares there, but that's not true. Upstream has no capabilities at the moment for uh, Americans to buy on it. We can list there, we can put our shares on there, but then we can only sell to other countries, okay? We can only sell to internationals. We cannot sell to other Americans. So there, if you wanted to list your shares there and just see if the price goes up because they can't be shorted there, great, go for it. You might make more money doing it that way. But as far as actually, um, and it's a T0, so it settles immediately, which is awesome because of the blockchain. And it transfers really quick too. Having said all that, um, you can't buy on there. So don't um, don't listen to that. That's That was kind of one of his main arguments. On top of that, and um, sorry guys, I scattered for a second. I forgot to talk about this too. Going back to GTII, there was a video put out today, and I don't even know this guy. I've never heard of him. He's... Uh, apparently he's a big GME um, AMC guy, 
But um, he just happened to make this video about how GTI is a trap because some board member was on a bank in the 90s. Um, for, as far as I could tell, um, I did some research on this. As far as I could tell, that guy's dead. And it was all about shady associations and stuff. Don't, don't, this stuff's nonsense. I, I really feel like I was looking at his videos and uh, I wish I could remember his name right now. I'll put the link down below. But um, it, it just, the timing was really suspect to me. Let me just put it that way. He puts out this video. He's never done anything on GTII before. Releases a video that GTII is a trap. And uh, it's just ridiculous, guys. This guy, I, I, you know, and people I'm sure say the same thing about me. And that's fine. But um, I'm at least consistent. And I just don't see consistency here. Um, but my point is, is that... If you feel like GTI is a trap, I mean, who's winning here, right? Um, get out. That's fine. Go for it. But honestly, what is that really the kind of thing you want to jump out on now when everything else is going on? We got the FBI being called because of our case now. We have uh, upstream about to be listed, and then the dividend can be listed. We have um, 100 law firms still coming. Um, we have all this stuff lining up for us. Merger with CRTD. Frommer's talking still about it, working with GTII. It's still on the table. Um, all this stuff could be happening, and, like, one one guy puts out a video like this and <laughs> scares people away. I mean, come on, guys. If if that's if that's what is going to scare you away, then, then just find something else you find your peace in. You know, go make 5% every year on Tesla. Um, so... And, and that actually brings me back to one more thing. So let's talk about MMTLP because I'll end on this. MMTLP today, it's coming out that uh, there's a lot of word that Congress is hearing what's going on about MMTLP and FINRA. And they are fast tracking to, to get uh, some investigation into this quickly. So that pressure right there from Congress is increasing. All right. So uh, we heard the subpoenas were out before. This just kind of corroborates that even further. Um, and this is from people who actually called their Congress people um, and uh, heard from them that they are looking into it. So this is this is good news. This is really good news. MMTLP, it does sound like you guys are really close to getting settled. I actually think um, you got the ticker back up on a couple of the brokerage uh, apps. So um, obviously it's not showing a price, but the fact that it's back at all, it's a good sign. So um, this lots of good news, guys. It was a rough day in the market for sure. Um, market right now, it's, uh, it's kind of figuring out what to make of all the CPI numbers, the job numbers, everything going on with the Fed and, and the economy, the macro economy. And so the market's kind of doing all this weird stuff right now. And I think just we're seeing, we're getting the result of a lot of that. Um, but the, the market, the, the macro economy getting worse is actually better for us, uh, in the short term, because it, it means that it's going to put pressure on the brokerages, on the firms, uh, lending money, on the shorts to cover because uh, it causes and squeezes the liquidity crisis even more, which puts pressure on them to cover. So, um, so start filtering it through that perspective on what's going on with the economy that it could actually be good for us, and uh, and it makes everything easier. So. Go away. You know, the last couple of days, I've actually spent less time following the stock uh, every few minutes, <laughs> every hour or so, um, just because I kind of know we're in this wash cycle right now. It's just good for your mental health, guys. Go out, take a walk, enjoy life. Whenever you do think about it, remember to think about it in context, not just what the price is. The price is not real. It's fake. We'll get this real price uh, eventually. Um, oh, and I have one more thing I want to address before I go. All right. Um, getting a lot of people asking me about where do I get the float number of 36 million? Well, here's, here's the truth. It's not listed anywhere officially. I cannot find it. I have looked and I've looked and I've looked. What I have done, the way I've found that 36 million number is by going to people who are closely uh, associated with GTI, who, who know GTI well, know the people there who've been in this forever, they, the number that keeps coming back to me is 35 or 36 million. So that, uh, and remember, it's different than because, um, I can't remember who it was. Some guy commented at me that Weeble, I think, is listing as 193 million, the float. That's, outstanding shares that's different than the actual float the float remember guys is what is officially released by the company as the shares they release to raise revenue and allow to be traded okay 
It's official. Outstanding shares is all these other shares out there are getting counted up a little bit here, a little bit there, but nobody knows the real count. Nobody does. And so what we're seeing, even in those numbers, is that there is corruption, manipulation, and inaccurate data. So you can look, I, I saw one place, it was uh, 216. There's just no way. There's no way GTI ever released that much. There's people who've been in this play now for two, three years, back when it was way smaller, and they know that the, the company's never released extra shares. They They have not done that. That would have had to be a notification to its shareholders that they were diluting. That has not happened. So you can go look and find those numbers. And yes, you'll see outstanding shares here. It looks bigger numbers. But that is not the official float. The official float is what matters. And by all indications, by everything I've found, it's 35, 36 million around there. So I just wanted to address that because I know that's a big concern for a lot of people. Because it would. It would dilute our, our squeeze. But that's not happening. This is still the best setup there is. So CRTD moving forward, MMTLP moving forward. Uh, as far as I know, GNS moving forward. So all the ones we're watching, even Wolf now is looking better. A lot of good things coming in our stocks, but we're still in the battle. And that's just how it is. But be encouraged, guys. FBI now on the case here. Congress is getting involved. Things are getting tighter and tighter for them. And it's only a matter of time. Have a good night.